Hello, in this video I'll be taking a look at these shoes I recently purchased. I'll be going somewhat in depth and commenting on some of the design choices made with the packaging and the shoes themselves. Before I start, I do have a disclaimer. I am in no way sponsored by Reebok or Capcom. I bought these shoes with my own money because I thought the collaboration was pretty interesting and I really liked the overall look and feel of the shoes when they were first revealed. And what also piqued my interest was Street Fighter collaborating with a shoe company to put out some shoes based on their characters. Along with this current pair that I'm reviewing, I also bought two other pairs that I will be reviewing hopefully in the future. So be on the lookout. The shoes I am reviewing today are the Reebok LX 2200s. With this colorway and collab with Street Fighter, I also call these the Cami shoes as they are based off of that character. So just a brief overview of the LX 2200s, they were modeled after and are a modern interpretation of Reebok's older models, the LX 8500s. They are categorized on Reebok's online store as classic shoes, but are quote, retro running inspired shoes with a mix of upper materials. So I think these running inspired shoes fit the ethos of Cami very well. In all of the Street Fighter games, she is known to be a rushdown character. What she excels at is putting pressure on the opponent and getting up and close with speed, and I feel like these running inspired shoes really fit her character. Those at Reebok who are charged with the design of these Kami shoes probably took her fighting abilities into consideration when choosing what shoes to represent her as a whole. So here's the top of the box. And you can see the Street Fighter and Reebok logo have this sort of shiny, um, laminated look to it. With the Street Fighter and Reebok logos on the top of the box, as I'm showing off the lamination, you could see the vertical lines from the cardboard box itself. And that makes me think that the print was very light and it was a very light layer of print onto a cardboard box. And it did feel a little less premium, but you know, this is just a box and that's all right. On the left side of the box, we have the Reebok logo and the indication for the size of the shoe and the, the model. And also what caught my eye here was this thing called EPC Inside. And I looked it up and it's called Electronic Product Code. So I think this does here is that it just allows the manufacturer to track the shoes in a more efficient way since it's using RFID. And as you can see, I got the nine and a halves. The right of the box here has the Street Fighter logo. So speaking on the Street Fighter logo they chose to use here, you typically see this in Udon comics or officially licensed products by Capcom. And I don't think it appears in any of the games or the mainline games at least. And here's the bottom of the box. You could see the Capcom logo there, which is really cool to see. The Reebok logo. All of the usual uh, sort of stamps and indicators for uh, typical boxes. And right here we see Adidas, which Reebok was previously owned by them up until 2021. I think Athletic Brands now owns Reebok. Now it's time to open the box and take a look. The first thing I see is a special wrapping paper with all the characters on it. And we'll just take out these shoes here and take a look at the printed paper here. So the first thing I noticed here is the wrapping paper with all of the different characters on it. And I thought that was a really nice touch. And we'll just put these shoes aside and take a look at the wrapping paper now. And I thought this was really special. It has the original roster for Street Fighter 2 here. So we have M. Bison or Dictator. We have Dalsim. Ryu's looking good right there with his Shoryuken. And then we've got Chung Li doing her Kikoken, I believe. She also has another move like that. I think it's her heavy punch. Then we got Vega and Balrog. Also got Blanca there. And then Ken over there doing his Tatsu. We also have Zangief. 
And then there's E Honda there. This came with this sticker that I'm not really sure what it was, but it just, you know, it might kind of be those quality control stickers and I could kind of make that out. It says TQC PVN9. It's probably a quality control sticker for the factory. Here's the inside of the box, empty. It's uh, nothing too special here. And we'll get to the shoes now. And they're awesome. They look beautiful. I'm really impressed with this design. And this is my first time owning the LX2200s as well. So having my first LX2200s as a collab shoe with Street Fighter is pretty special. Here on the back of the shoe, we have the Delta Red logo which is on Cami's beret. And I tried looking more into sort of the meaning behind it, but I believe it's just that it's Cami's uh, Delta Red logo, which is on the, her hat in, in, the main, in her main costume. Taking a look at the back of the shoe here, there's this raised panel here that looks like Cami's cuff protectors, and I believe that's where the design cues are taking place. And so I believe this is where the inspiration comes from. I thought that was a really nice touch because it's almost mimicking her design with her cuff protectors and translating that into a shoe. Where my lower part of the leg is equivalent to Cami's forearm, the cuff protector kind of wraps around my foot, which also in turn, in Cami's design, wraps around her forearm and sort of part of her wrist. I also like this little yellow accent for the pull tab. And I thought that was a really neat touch as well. And a nod to Cami's hair color. So looking at these harness webbings here at first, initially I was thinking, what does this translate to in Cami's design? And so I was looking through different iterations of her main costume design in different games. And I stumbled upon the Street Fighter V design. And I never noticed, but she's wearing a harness that kind of goes across her body and also has, and also another harness that goes around her leg where it looks like maybe a gun or a pistol can be held. And I believe this is where they're taking the design cues from here as well. Taking a look at the upper, there's a lots of nice little details here. Across the toe is this ballistic nylon and this and this nice little piece or patch in front of the shoe. I really love this side profile of the shoe. I think it's one of my favorite angles of this shoe. Now I'm taking a look at the midsole. And as you can see, there's this sort of camouflage pattern going across it. And that is definitely a nod to Cami's camouflage on her legs that she paints. And that's on her Street Fighter 2 design, which actually no longer exists on her Street Fighter 5 design. I believe she also has camouflage on her legs in Street Fighter 4. One thing I noticed here while looking at the midsole was this sort of cutaway where the outsole meets the midsole. And I thought that was pretty interesting. And it becomes readily apparent when we look at the outsole and why that is. And so looking at the bottom of the shoe, that cutaway matches up perfectly where the ball of the foot would meet in that area. And I thought this outsole was a pretty interesting design with four different patterns going on. And the camouflage motif continues here as well. Also on the outsole are these little nibs. I'm not sure if you can see it in the video but I feel like eventually those would wear off or break away, but, but surprisingly after a couple of weeks of wearing it, they're still there. But in time, I'm sure they'll wear off eventually. We also got a part of the outsole coming up to the front of the shoe. So we have this interesting inner collar pattern that goes around the collar of the shoe. 
It doesn't extend into the inside of the shoe and it kind of just stops midway, kind of at the heel. On the right side of the shoe, we have Fight. And this is the exact design used on all of the Street Fighter 2 games. And of course, this is what you see before you start a round in the game. I thought it was a really neat touch. Also on the tongue on the right side of the shoe is the Reebok logo in yellow. And I thought that was a really good design choice because there wasn't much yellow in the shoe besides the pull tab on the heel. We'll take a look at the left side of the shoe now. Here's that EPC inside tag and a disclaimer tag from Reebok as well. And some of the noticeable changes here are in the tongue and the insole. Again, a great looking shoe, very sporty. Here's the tongue with the Street Fighter logo on it in yellow, really nice. And then we take a look at the insole here, and there's a couple of things I want to talk about. First off, Cammy's name is written in the Street Fighter 4 font type. However, we have Cammy's Street Fighter 2 picture that is used in the selection screen and the versus screen, and I thought that was pretty interesting as well. Taking a look at the overall design of the shoe, it definitely takes design cues and inspiration from many of the games and not just a single game. As we have the harnesses from the shoe from Kami Street Fighter 5 design, we have the fight font type from Street Fighter 2. Kami's name is written in the font type from Street Fighter 4. And then again, her picture on the left insole is used from Street Fighter 2 as well. And here is what they look like on the feet. First, I'll show them off with just some ordinary sweatpants. And from almost any angle, they look really nice. And here's what the cami shoes look like from above. I thought this angle would be really useful for those looking to see what these shoes look like from a top-down view because, you know, 80 or 90% of the time, you'll probably be seeing your shoes from this angle. I also decided to show what they look like with shorts and ankle-high socks. And I think they look really good. They look sporty. They pair really well with shorts. And I feel like in the summer, this will be one of the shoes that I wear the most. I've worn these shoes for a couple of weeks now, and my first impression is that they're very comfortable. They're light. But the one thing that I notice is that it does get slightly, ever so slightly cramped in the front of the foot where my toes meet the shoe. And I think this will stretch out over time and become a more comfortable shoe as I wear it more. And because of that, I still believe these are true to size. And that concludes the video. I hope to make more videos about shoes in the future. And hopefully you can stick around and watch those as well. Thank you for watching.